Record. Hi, everybody. My name is Lacey Hart, and I am the CEO and founder of Spiritual Grace. And I am here with my great friend, Erin Kozier, who is the, well, I'll let her introduce herself. <laughs> <laughs> well, hi there, beautiful Miss Lacey Hart, my friend and my, um, my ally. Yes. <laughs> my right. ally in shedding light and love and all that good stuff around this planet. And um, I am Erin Kozier. I am the founder and the owner of the Lightworker Development School. And I am a psychic development mentor and a spiritual coach, NLP practitioner, hypnotherapist, and well, the list can go on, but it doesn't need to. <laughs> And today, Erin and I are so excited because we are talking about something and bringing some awareness to people about what it feels like and what it's like to go through a spiritual awakening. Because I know a lot of us that watch this, you've been through one or you're going through one or you're not sure if you're going through one because this can be hard. So we're just here today to talk about what it was like for us to share some personal experience and to share some tips to help you with this transition because that's really what it is it's a transition you know what it not only is it a transition it's really about you're growing you're evolving you're developing you are um something awakens yes. meaning it was already there yes. okay it was already there so awakening and then once you become aware of it about you processing it uh, developing it, using it, um, and so forth. So Aaron, I have a question. When you went through your spiritual awakening, how old were you? Do you, I mean, you might have, yeah, tell the story because yours is different and other people really might hear this uh, resonate with this and think, wow, I felt like um, my whole life too. So I remember vividly, I was three. I mean, I remember it vividly and I heard this deep man's voice and he said Aaron don't Aaron stop and I was like and I don't and so I remember running screaming through this massive um I was at my grandparents house Oh. Uh, yeah, I was uh, a, a massive um, Central Hall Colonial in upstate New York, and I went running and screaming. Ah! Had everyone checked the entire house, including the basement, the attic, everything, and they told me there's no one there. They're looking at me like I have lost my mind, and I'm just like, you people are wrong, <laughs> okay? Yes. But what was even more freaky was it knew my name. Yep. All right, so that was like... <sighs> Um, and then I heard it a few more times and it was just like, and then I started to just, I'm like, okay, I don't know what this is, who this is, but whatever. And then I realized even when we would move to a new house or something, it was the same voice and I would just randomly hear it. And so I was like, okay. I guess you're supposed to be, and that's fine. Did I know that other people didn't hear that, experience that? No, I didn't even really, after I got over the fear, I just didn't even talk about it because I just, you know, it just was. I, I took it that it was just a normal yeah. thing. Now, what about yours? Oh, mine was similar. See, my experience was, um, and I know that a lot of people go through it differently. Like you said, yours started when you were a little kiddo and nobody blocked your connection. Every, and you've told me before that didn't your mom kind of encourage it along in a nonchalant way. I love yeah. that. I love that. Very, very. So grateful for that, I'm sure, because, oh yeah, I felt that in your heart when you. <sighs> you know, growing up, um in a Catholic family. My father, uh, New York, Italian, Roman Catholic. They made sure I never forgot. I was supposed to put that word before it. I'm like, really? Why? How many types are there? But anyway, um, and so 
when I would talk about things that I thought were normal. I did not realize other people weren't doing these things that it wasn't that I was doing something that others didn't. Um, like I remember we were taking a trip into, uh, we had moved to New Jersey and we were going to visit family in New York, but we were going a different way. And I said, oh, I remember this. I know where we are. And my father's like, we've never been to this part. You don't know. I was like, no, really? I was like, and up there, there's going to be the big picture like this and this and da, 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 da. And sure enough, I'll be honest, guys, I got a spanking. Oh, my. Because it freaked him out so much. So my mom's way was, as I grew up, I learned, you know, she would just say, so what do you think about this? Or what kind of feeling do you get about this? And I, I answer and she's go, okay, thank you. I didn't realize until I was much older that that was her way of validating me. Yep. I guess and that's saying, that's saying, I believe you, I understand, I trust you. You know, so that way, and it just became like, okay, this is normal. Just don't tell dad. <laughs> like, you know, I just kept my mouth shut there. Um, and then you just kind of naturally learn who is going to be comfortable and who isn't. I never thought of it as right or wrong. Right. There was never, and there never has been a right or wrong for me about it. It's just about who is comfortable with this side of me and who isn't, who isn't, you know, and Lacey, that was three when I heard that voice. And do you know, it was not until my thirties that I finally realized that that was my spirit guide wow. because growing up, there was no one to talk to. So there was no knowledge of this. Yes. Um, I didn't make that connection. So it took a long time, but yes, tell me about yours. Well, so mine was, I'm very lucky because my mom, when I was younger, I used to have intuitive dreams about people, about family members that had passed. They would come and my great, great grandpa came to me in a dream was telling me about his war medals and his full name. And I woke up and I told my mom, and I'm so thankful because at that very moment, she could have been scared or nervous and she encouraged me and I want to bring up how important it is to have somebody to be encouraging and accepting during this right because when you don't have that support it is so hard to speak on what you're thinking feeling going through so exactly. kudos to anybody exactly. that is the mom or the sister or the grandma or the friend that are that's encouraging thank you from, I know Aaron feels the same. Absolutely. And that's also, if you do not have, yes. of course, we, we pray that you do. If you do not have, that is why we have created private communities. So you can do that. Lacey has Spiritual Grace, a private um, group on Facebook. And I have the Light Warriors, a uh, private group on Facebook. So that you do have a space to talk, explore, learn, and know that you are fully supported. Yes, because, and, and I just, that just popped in my heart to say thank you to the supporters. <laughs> thank you so much yes. for people. Cause you know, I think about that and how all, and I shut myself down about 15 and I had to get myself back open, but I didn't open back up till my dad passed away. And it was like um, that transmutation of the grief I'm going to call it a transmutation of the grief to trying to figure out the knowledge behind it is really what opened me up. And, and I heard voices too. I would hear my name and I'm very lucky because at, you know, 26 years old, when you're doing dishes and you hear Lacey, Lacey. And I remember one day I turned around and I yelled at Nick and I said, what do you want? And he said, I'm not talking to you right now. And that Oh, okay. So you're hearing voices, you're hearing your name and nobody in your physical presence is speaking to you. That was a big eye opener to me. Is there something going on outside of my physical world that I'm not understanding? And, and like Aaron, I was raised in a Baptist family. Um, and this spirituality wasn't really a thing. It was one way or no way. Um, so to even understand that there was more to what I hadn't been taught or what had been taboo to me my whole life and my family holy cow 
So didn't you feel that way too when you got out of and you were able to really start experiencing this on your own and knowledge for yourself to think that what you had been brought up in was different than what you believed to be true? What was that well, for you? Uh, you know what? I also had another blessing. My great grandmother uh, adore her, adored her. And uh, she was wonderful. She used to get a subscription to a magazine called Fate, F-A-T-E, Fate Magazine. It's uh, put out by Llewellyn Press. And they, I don't even remember how far back that magazine started, 50s, 60s, something like that. And um, she just knew that you know, I had an interest in all sorts of things, I guess, you know, like right. going back, I, I can't consciously remember, but this magazine was about ghosts and um, UFOs and angels and all right. sorts of, you know, metaphysical or at the time, you know, growing up for me, everything was just labeled occult. You know, with yes. the new age, new age didn't come out until the eighties, you know? Okay. So at that point, that was the lump name of everything. And so she would give them to me. So from the age of seven, I would be reading the magazines. I literally, it was just about maybe five, six years ago. I had crates and crates and crates of these. And I knew that they were worth something. However, at the time I was like, you know what? Can't be bothered, um, donated them. Don't know if the library took them or not, but I did donate them. Right. So I had been exposed to a lot of things. Right. Plus I was always an avid reader, but it wasn't until the new age movement that opened the door, bless Hay House, Louise yeah. Hay. Thank God. Bless, bless, bless Louise Hay. Um, and that door opened up. And then it was like, you had these people out there professionally yes. talking about angels, talking about being psychic, talking about being a medium, talking about energy, talking about, you know, all of these other things. And so that for me was like, buffet open Yay. and I just girl I just walked around with plates and forks and I was like <laughs> more 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 yes. I you know Reiki when I was introduced to Reiki and it was still new here yes. um in the United States I mean back then they were still charging anywhere from it was roughly believe it or not 10,000 yeah, that's what I was getting ready to what, say it was 10,000 when Reiki started here in the States uh, to get your attunement and get your certificate, you know, like everything. And I was just like more, 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 more. And yet it still took me a while to put the words to some of the experiences that I had. Oh, that's what they're talking about. And I just, I do want to say this, your awakening or your first experience with um, spirituality or the metaphysical. Yeah. It can be so gentle. It could be just so gentle. Um, maybe something like you're standing in the kitchen and, and, and you just get a fragrance and you're just like, that smells like my grandma. Yes. You know, it could be so gentle or it can be intense. I had a client that her first real like, in your face can't deny was um I mean, uh, she was just surrounded by dead people and she was just seeing all these people and she didn't know what to make of it she was in her early teens freaked her out yeah. so all of the gifts that she had already been using but just didn't even realize that's what they were she just tried to clamp everything down because of the fear and then you can have everything in between and you and here's the thing, guys, no spiritual waking trumps another. Correct. There is no such thing, whether it is the gift of just like you've had a few times, a sense of knowing, you had a dream, you smelled something, you just felt something is just as powerful yeah. 
as if you hear someone booming at your name at you and telling you what to do, blah, blah, blah. Um, it is, you're right. They're, they're, they're equal. They are. They're equal. And okay. I'm yeah. No. no, I just don't want anyone to think that, well, all I did was one day I had a sense of this. So this, no, okay, that's fine. You can develop that. Because it's all right. to you. It's an awareness now that you have. And the reason I got my name screamed at me like, a, you know, because I wasn't listening. I wasn't aware. I wasn't being in control of me. I wasn't in control of me. I was on autopilot. So the best way to get my attention now I understand why they had to yell at me in my head was to literally yell at me in my head because that got me to stop, put everything down and, oh, okay, I need to pay attention. Something else is going on. So that's, I love that point because they just do whatever gets your attention, right? Like you said, it could be a feeling. It could be a sin. It could be an inner knowing. It could be your name. It could be something completely different. It could be the lights flicker on and off when you come in the room and you're just. Or just a thought pops into your head and you're like, Oh, I wonder where that came from. Yes, I love that. And that I love that because it's all different, but it's all still an awakening. It's all you still, and I love how you said it's there. It's always been there. We've always had it. We just sort of go through an activation and we allow it and it comes up and you can keep developing, but it's scary, right? It can be scary to go through this. Some, you know what? Sometimes it can be, and we want to... First off, here's the thing. If it wasn't scary, don't think again. It's less than. Nope. It doesn't have to be scary. We also want to let you know that it can be. All right. And um, if that happens, take a deep breath. Just take a deep breath. And at that moment, I I'm going to ask that you uh, just maybe adopt my belief for a moment. And at, at that very moment, whether you want to call upon God, or if you want to call upon a saint, um, an angel, or um, anyone, and I want you to just say that prayer that says, you know, I'm really, right now I'm feeling fear. I ask that you come to me. I ask that you help me, you know, Either let's stop it or just help me to feel better or help me to understand this. Ask for assistance to navigate what's going on. I had to do that because if you want me to be honest, I was so scared to be in silence because I couldn't, con there was too much going on up here. And if I would be in silence, I had to listen. So I would hear lots of things I needed to do but I was in fear because I knew that wasn't my voice talking to me and I know my inner voice. Um, so it scared me. And I used to guys, I was scared to be in a, in a room without anything on. I would make myself turn frequency music on anything that it took to not be in silence because I did not want to face it because I was scared. And I remember one night when Nick, I worked, I was at home alone and Nick was working night shift. And I had all three of the kids. Hadley was a baby. And he worked 12 hour nights and I was at home by myself and I kept hearing my name and I thought, dear God, nobody's home with me. I've got these three kids and you don't know where it's coming from. And it, and I, I remember sitting up and I just said, I don't like this in the middle of the night. I don't, I, this doesn't feel good to me. I'm open, but I'm not open in the middle of the night. I'm not open in the bathroom in the middle of the night. Can we please talk in the daytime? Everything. <sighs> Absolutely. I want to make a couple of, um, share a couple of things here. So as I was saying, it's already in here, right? Yes. And um, you can do this on your own, guys. Honestly, you can. Or find someone to work with. One of the things I do is I teach my students, and I'm going to give you guys a visual so you can anchor this in. We are right now surrounded by airwaves, energy. Like right now, all of that information I could tap into on the internet, music stations, radio stations, um, believe it or not, even though we can't hear it, the hum of the electricity for the things that are plugged in. So the each awakening, I want you to think of it as you're a radio with a dial. And you you at some point you moved 
to that station. So the stuff is coming in and then you go, ah, and you shake the radio when it goes back down, um, which is fine. You can also learn, this is what I teach, is take that dial and let's find those other stations and tap in and then develop it and get you comfortable on how to use that music or that information or whatever. So that I want you to have that visual. So when that's happening, you're tapping into a frequency. You already have your radio. The other thing you were telling your story and oh boy, can I relate? I'm going to share. So one night, I lived um, up in the mountains. I was home alone uh, with my, my, my girls. My youngest was a baby. And um, I heard an airplane. Now, at that time, I didn't have hearing aids in or anything. So the fact that I can hear it, right. it's kind of, that means it's loud. And I'm sitting in my bed reading and it's getting louder and louder. And I'm like, what is this? So I actually got up and I went and looked out my window thinking like, cause it was getting louder and louder and it sounded like it was gonna hit my house. That's how loud. And my room felt like it was vibrating but it was so loud and it really sounded like it was gonna hit my house. I was terrified and I was like, what the heck's going on? I'm out, I'm looking, cause I'm thinking, do I need to grab the kids? Where do I run to? What's, you know, my, my youngest was like a year and a half old. Right. So it's like, and then I heard voices talking but I couldn't understand the language and there was multiple and stuff. And, and then I heard loud music and my whole room's vibrating and this airplane sounds like it's in my bedroom with me. By this point, I'm in tears. I'm in tears. Now, please keep in mind, I'm, I'm in my late 30s. I've been a, a psychic medium my whole life. But this was like, I didn't know what the hell this was. I was terrified. And I, I didn't know what was going on. So I prayed. I prayed to my angels. And I said, please. Please help me. Please help me. I, I like, cause I was in bed. I'm just freaking out. Don't know what's going on. And I just prayed, please help me. Please help me. Please help me. All of a sudden I kind of felt a calm and I remember sliding down in my bed and then I, I could still, I felt the hand like this on my back. And that was the last thing I remember until I woke up the next morning, my angel came and just, made it okay. But things like that in dreams and sounds led me on a journey. I reached out to every psychic I knew. I reached out to every card reader I knew. I reached out to, I heard about this thing called Echinar, the religion of light and sound. I went to, I found a presentation and I went and I said, what does it mean when you hear an airplane? I looked up in the dream books, you know, I'm doing everything I could imagine. And I was having these, um, things happen and dreams and stuff. And I was telling my friends, I did not realize that they were preparing me for 9-11, which would happen three months later. Wow. I didn't know three or four months later, I didn't know that was happening. And it wasn't until about a month or so after that one of my friends you know, we were talking and she said she, as soon as it happened, she realized that's what I was getting, but I didn't know what to do with that information. I didn't know what that information was, you know? So I'm sharing this to say, if you don't know what you're getting or you don't know the why, that's okay. Ask for help, either reach out to a person or ask your guides, ask your angels, talk to God, ask for help with either clarity, understanding, because those two things are different with, um, or knowing what am I supposed to do with this information? Because I'll be honest, Lacey, after that experience and a couple of others, like um, I heard all of these roaring ocean, roaring ocean and like a wave in my room was taking me under. 
And it was just like, I didn't understand this, what was going on. And then we had that tsunami in Indonesia, the year that that happened at Christmas on Christmas day. Um, but I'll tell you what, there's nothing I could have done with that information. There's nothing that I could have done with the 9-11 information. So I said to them, if I cannot do something to make a difference, right. or unless I need to know this to prepare for my, I don't want to know. Being tapped into that radio station has no value for me. Right. And, and you like, have that right to say that. You have the right to set the boundaries. You have the right to say, I am comfortable using blank gift, but not another. You know, I have a client where we have made it known that um, she has very strong mediumship, that they are welcome to talk to her, but she does not want to see them. Do not visualize. So you have the right to set how you're going to use or how you want to develop your abilities. Oh yeah, I do. I mean, I'm not, I'm so thankful. And I know a lot of us, we don't want to get it wrong, right? We don't want to get it wrong. We don't want to upset the higher power, but that's not what this is guys. This is sifting and sorting through your gifts to find out what you're comfortable with. And I was so uncomfortable with my, my strongest gift is my clear audience. I'm a, I, and really I feel my intuition and my clear audience are my two strongest gifts, but I had to tell my angels to pipe down literally like pipe down y'all this is scaring me a little and you know what that was okay and guess what they did they took a step back and we we started from a different angle so the angle was in the morning I would hear let's do a meditation so I would act on that right and it was a very subtle graceful intro after I said I can't handle the yelling in my ear I can't um and and around me and I'm sure a lot of you that have gone through this people thought I was crazy. I had my mom and Nick and, and, and I think about now my mom, and I'm sure she was just thinking, you just lost your dad. You just had postpartum depression. Are you okay? But they really thought that I was struggling mentally. And I had one cousin who was like, no, she's not. This is a whole different ball game. And she would go to bat for me to everybody. Thank God for her. Right. Because, oh my God, that one person that understood me, the one person in my adult years that made her break everything because I thought okay she sees that I'm not that this is happening everywhere I go when I'm around her I'm telling her what I'm hearing what I'm feeling she's in it with me she understands so that made me be able to say okay other people might not understand but I'm going to work with my guides because I feel safe I felt safe the whole time with my angels and that's another thing if you feel safe with them that's a that's a huge deal I knew I was safe with them and I knew all it took was me to vocalize my needs and they met them and they met me halfway and I met them halfway and we worked together and I cultivated this. And I wish I would have met you when I went on this because I did it alone for a very long time, very hard. The first year or so of my spiritual awakening, I was alone and I didn't tell anybody except my cousin what I was going through because the people around me, like you said, you figure out who you can and you can't talk to. I had one person out of everybody. Um, and I'm, so, I wish, you know, I'm so thankful now to be where I'm at because there are people like me and you that are extending our hand and saying, I see you, you are, I see, okay. you. I see you, I get you come be with me. You're safe here. Now you're safe with yes. us. Exactly. And you know, there are people I was, you know, a lot especially if your gifts come to you when you're young, but even if it hits in your thirties, twenties, forties, whatever, um, if you have no knowledge of the spiritual world, if you have no knowledge, you know, an angel is that thing they talk about in the Bible and it's Gabriel and he comes out at Christmas, you know, or something. Right. Um, if you don't never heard about a spirit guide, what the heck is that? Um, if it's all brand spanking new energy, frequencies vibrations right. crystals what yep. you know smudging and this and that and you're just like i you feel like you just fell down a rabbit hole of what you the do. heck and that's so if any of these things that we are saying to you you're hearing for the very first time one the fact that you're hearing it is not a coincidence right. and right now it is one two three four 
I know. I just when I said I that, worked. it is not a coincidence. It is called a synchronicity, and you may look that up. Um, that means it's time for you to hear that. Yes. And you know, Lacey and I do have programs. We do one-on-one -on -one sessions and teaching. We have one-on-one -on -one sessions for different, even healing modalities. Um, mentally, spiritually, physically, emotionally. And we invite you to reach out to either one of us. And uh, let's start a conversation of where you are at and where you want to be. Or even just that conversation of this is happening. I don't know what it is. Can you just you know, get me a little clarity? Reach out to one of us. Our links on how to reach us our websites all our facebook groups we're going to leave that all um on the bottom i do want to say if you made it this long um we thank you for being here we thank you for taking your time to take this information in for yourself and we thank you also because it allows us to shed our light share our knowledge and our care and concern and our love for everybody. And we're gonna ask that, you know, you hit the subscribe buttons, you hit the like buttons, you leave a comment. It, it helps us to get that word out even more. And we welcome your feedback. Yes. What resonated for you? What made you scratch your head? What are you going to implement? What questions do you have? You know, we want to hear that from you. We um, we enjoy helping people, and we also use that information to prepare for our weekly shows. Yes, and thank you guys for tuning in because this is and this is such a short conversation on such a big topic. I know everybody sees my rocks. I always sit and play with my rocks when I talk. Um, this is such a short conversation for such a large topic. So we yeah. can spend hours on this. Yeah. Yes. This is yes. this is just me and Aaron throwing in little bits that we can get in in thirty minutes because we want you guys to know: a, you're not alone. You are not alone. You are not. There's nothing wrong with you. You're fine. You have a community of people who understand. Here we are. If this comes up and pops up, it's probably because you needed it. You need a community. And Aaron and I share clients. We are. We have a lot of similarities. We have a lot of love for people. There's a lot that we give and we love doing it. We love to be in service. That's why we do these videos to help and just try to get you guided on a path that you need, right? It's just about us saying, we see you, we acknowledge you. So we're showing up to reach you. Absolutely. And I do want to say, if you know somebody that this would apply to, share the information with them let them know that there are people that there are communities that there is support um and there is a safe place to grow learn develop explore um so you know pass that along let them know honestly if there is someone you know we can help yes let them know to reach out that's why we're here it's why we get up every day right well we thank you guys so much for being here and we're sending you so much love and we're excited to see you next Friday. Yep. Bye Take care. Everybody.